Hi everybody, Chuck here. It's uh, March 30th, I believe, in the year of our Lord 2020. Kind of wonder if sometimes, you know, the only thing left in the universe will be YouTube and people from a thousand years ahead will look back and see what we were doing, maybe, huh? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cover a short um, segment here, just about five minutes, and I'm just going to talk about chain tensioning. It's it's a simple little thing. We don't talk about it much, but it's very important, and I haven't addressed it in all my builds thus far. And there's two basic chains to be concerned with in the way we're building these things. You've got a, a differential here, and you got a jack shaft, and then we'll have, of course, um, the sprocket from the torque converter down to the jack shaft. Now, let me tell you what we can't do at this point. The differential, it's in here with pillow block bearing six of them down the front, so this, this thing isn't going to move. There's no way to tension this back and forth. You don't want that anyway. Um, your jack shaft, depending on if you hogged out the frame a little bit or you had some pillow block bearings actually have a little space on them where there, there's a little give to them, and I had a, a set of those, but they kept loosening up, so I decided I would have fixed mine tight right there. So... For practical purposes, your jack shaft isn't going to move, and your differential isn't going to move. But what will move is your chain. This chain, when I first started, I've only had, a, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes on this whole track vehicle. But this is how much the chain, well, if I undid this, this is how much the chain stretched in just a real, real short time. It, it is stretched, and you can see that's still putting a little tension on that. So you got to do something, at least my opinion is, you got to do something in order to keep that chain tensioned properly. I came up with this little idea. Um, I simply put a piece of one inch square tubing, I welded it to the frame. I took a bolt, and you can't see it really good, but I welded a bolt. To this, to this piece of one inch by quarter inch flat steel. I welded a bolt, welded the head right to it, and ran a hole all the way through. And you can kind of see it here. Ran it all the way through. I'm sorry, apologize for that. My lights are so bright. But you get the idea. It's just a 5 16 bolt that's all the way through and bolted on the back <clears throat> and I put a little piece of this uh, um, steel tubing that I'm using the same thing for my axles for my axle shafts I just put a little piece in there to to straighten it up so it doesn't have as much um, wobble side to side um, Oregon chain tensioner I bought two of them because I thought about doing something very unique and I may, may head that way eventually we got a part number of 34810, 10 tooth idler sprocket. They're pretty cheap, can be found on eBay. Um, again, it's for the number, you see it down here where my thumb's at, number 40 slash 41 chain. It'll fit this fine. Um, put a medium spring, just have a spring laying around and put a hole in my frame just to keep that tight. Now, some purists may say, you know, you may, you're supposed to tension them from the bottom and so forth because of the way they pull, but I just decided I'd go with the top right now. You know me. I do a lot of things, and if I'm, if I'm wrong, then you'll know because I'll tell you about it. But I think that's all it's going to take. <clears throat> so that takes care of the one chain, hopefully. The second chain is one from the engine to the, to the jack shaft. We're going to take this chain, the second chain, <clears throat> that runs right from my Go Power ports, Go Power Sports Series 40 torque converter. And we're going to run from there down to the jack shaft. By the way, I'm using my life hand now. Um, it's when I put it back together the second time. I have the Predator with the electric start over uh, on my other bench. But for now, I'm going to use the life hand because the governor's out of it. And I thought if we're going to, we're going to mess with it, let's, uh, let's really put the torque to it and see if we break anything. Um, there's my suspension, by the way. I didn't show you that. We're, we're not going to do another video on the suspension, but that's all in. I'm leaving my track a little loose. You'll know that you don't really have to tighten them up exceedingly tight. 
and we'll shortly be able to see how my suspension works. <clears throat> but we're not talking about that anyway. So there's that chain, then the second chain. Best way to take care of that is in your engine plate. Let me, let me stop at this point and say something. If you're looking at my slots there, this is where I would jump in and say it's crude but effective. I wish I had all the correct, you know, milling tools and stuff. This is really, really hard steel. It's quarter inch. They call it black steel. Whatever, you know, it's really, really tough. So it's a little hard drilling and then, then hogging everything out there. But the best way to tension that, in my opinion, will be just make the slots in your engine plate. That way you've got the first chain covered for your jack shaft to your differential and then from your other sprocket to the motor and then you'll have them both an ability to tension them which it, it believe me you're going to need to do that i've done enough of these track vehicle stuff to know that they stretch and then you have to quit your riding and have to adjust it and it's pain so there we go we'll let you go at this point just a short video by the way i hope to have this together by the end of the day and running around on it and um, we're surviving okay hope you are and until we meet again uh, just say God bless thanks guys bye bye